Let's now talk about variants. Variants are a really convenient way to have a prop, like let's say this barrel, and to then pick different versions of that prop. So, as an example, let's say that I want to have a version of this barrel with a lid and a barrel without a lid. The way this works is that in LOPS, you want to have, you want to build out a barrel with a lid and you want to build out separately a barrel without a lid. So let's just do this to start things off. Before I get too far, let's change this primitive path to something better. Let's say forward slash barrel, forward slash barrel geo, forward slash barrel body. And what you'll notice over here in the scene graph tree is that now we've organized this setup very differently. At the top, we have barrel, we then have barrel geo, and we have barrel body. So let me show you uh, where I'm going with this. I'm going to say that this is barrel underscore body, and I'm going to isolate the body. So I'll say import group, and then I'll pick the barrel with the metal straps. So everything except for the lid. And these prim groups, by the way, are what were specified here on SOPS. So if we middle mouse, I'm basically referring to these groups right here, and that is able to isolate what I import with this SOP import. Okay, so let's make a copy of this and now just isolate the lid. So barrel underscore lid. And then from here, we can now just select lids and we have that. Now, one thing to pay attention to as you go along is the kind, like what sort of kind are things, and then also this layer save path. This layer save path, again, it's like if you're working at a, a pipeline or a studio, this is where this specific USD information gets saved to. So if you have a server, it's like asking you, okay, where do you want to save this barrel and metal straps info on the server. That's kind of what this is trying to refer to. So with the lid, let's call this our barrel lid.usd. And over here at the body, we can call this our barrel body.usd. Okay, and then also with the kind. So this kind right here, this barrel body, I want, or excuse me, this barrel geo right here, I want this to be a components and I want the lowest level, that is the body and the lid, to be subcomponents. So the way this works is let's do this. First of all, merge these together. So we'll go like that. And with the barrel lid, let's also be sure that we say barrel lid right there. So that now when we, when we have this merged, we have barrel body, barrel lid. I'm going to create a primitive or a configure primitive lop right there. And this lets us change the kind for these two highlighted prims. So I could say kind, let's change this to a subcomponent. And as you can see now that's a subcomponent. If I want to change this barrel geo above it to be a component, which is one level above subcomponents, then I can go here to the actual SOP import, and under this parent primitive kind, I can choose components. And that will do the trick right there. So there we go, component, subcomponent, subcomponent. And again, the reason why we do this is if you are in a pipeline, this gives people more control over any sort of actions that need to happen to all subcomponents in a scene. Or let's say that a lighting department wants to hide all components, they have a tag associated with this prop that they can easily access everything from. That's kind of the main idea. Now that we have this, let's drag down the reference and I'm going to plug in this, so the merged barrel lid, barrel body, as the main thing that we're trying to reference. And be sure to do this again, we have this primitive path that we're applying this material information to. We need to update this because we changed the name within our scene graph tree. So this needs to now be barrel forward slash barrel geo, likewise with the material. 
So we need to go right there for the primitives. And for the material path, we then need to fix that as well. So that now we have everything back to the way it was. Okay, so in order to isolate our two variants, we need to use a prune lop. A prune doesn't actually delete the geometry, but it will hide it from the scene graph path. So in this case, I want to hide the lid. So there we go. There is our barrel without a lid. Now let's create a null, and we can name this here barrel no lid. And it's also very important to make these nulls and tag it like this so that if somebody else ever works on your file, they know why you did that prune and it's very obvious. And then let's create another null right here and we will say that this is our barrel with lid. And we don't need to make any changes to it because up here, there's a barrel with a lid. Let's now actually create a variant. So, with the variants, we have a couple of different ways of doing this. We have add variants to existing primitive and add variants to new primitive. I want to show you the new primitive one first, and this will give you an idea of what's happening. The left input says input stage, and I haven't mentioned what stage is. Stage is basically all the stuff that's existing within this LopNet right now. It's a whole stage. I mean, think of a stage full of stuff. That's what it's talking about. In this case, we just have a prop. So we're going to input our main barrel right there. The barrel with no lid is going to go to the second input. That's going to become a variant. And I'm also going to plug in this barrel with the lid as a variant. So we have with a lid, with no lid, they both get plugged in and they're both considered variants. More on that here in a second. But if we go here, the first thing we have is primitive path. That's asking you, okay, where do you want that drop down menu to happen? Like if we have a drop down menu to select barrel with body or barrel with a lid, where's that drop down going to happen? The place that makes the most sense is this barrel geo which exists above the barrel body and the barrel lid. So my recommendation is that whenever you set this prim path, you just go for whatever is above the variance that you're trying to create. So we say that. For right now, don't worry about this primitive kind, this parent primitive type, this create options block. Don't worry about that. We don't need it right now. Variant set is talking about something else called variant sets. A set would be like a group of variants. So if let's say you had a forest of trees, you might have a set of trees that are like fall colored or summer trees or winter trees. It's like an entire group of this particular asset that you can create. And so in this case, we only have a one barrel. So let's just call this our barrel set like that. And again, this is the group that all of our variants live under within the asset itself. The variant primitive right here is asking you, hey, where do all the variants live? Or where do they live under? They all live under this thing called barrel geo that exists above barrel body and barrel lid. So let's drag that over there. We have that. And last but not least, you can name the variants by double clicking this variant name right there. So let's call this barrel with lid. And then the next one, barrel without lid. And so now if you want to decide what the default barrel will be, just pick whatever is going to be at the top of this list. In this case, the barrel with no lid I'll click this up arrow. That is our default. Now, if I want to change the variant, I could say this, set variant. Do that. We already have barrel set right there. And now we can select barrel with lid or barrel without lid. And there you go. It's pretty much what variants are. Now, 
One more thing before I wrap up this long tutorial. If we right click and we say lop actions and we inspect the active layer, what has happened here is that it has created two barrels. So we have this, that's our, well actually it's, I believe it's right here. Our barrel with lid is all this. So it created a barrel with a lid and now this is barrel without lid. So it's basically making two barrels when this happens. And because of that, that's why I would not recommend using the add variant node. I know we just talked about it a whole bunch, but there's actually a more efficient way of doing this. And that is the other option here called add variance to existing primitive. Now you have this block. So, you know what, I, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna make a new video and in the next video, let's talk about this variant block.